Hello, it's Pete here with a new vlog. And we've got a summer theme right now, a bit of a heat wave here in the UK. So I hope you enjoy this mate. We're going to be bringing in lots of distress oxides and lots of fun techniques. Take it away. So I'm going to start by cutting one of the two gorgeous seashells on this big die. This die incidentally comes with its own embossing folder which correspond obviously with the die cut shapes. So today I'm cutting mount board. Mount boards are very heavy material. Don't try cutting it with wafer thin dies. You will need big dies to cut this thickness of material. So there we have it. There's my little shell and it's all ready to ink up. We're going to be using, as you can probably see here, quite a few of these distress oxide inks. So I'll just take my machine over there for the time being and I'll lay out my craft mat. This is to prevent any ink getting onto my work surface. And I'm going to start off with a couple of colours, worn lipstick and spiced marmalade. So we'll put those there. And I want quite a subtle effect. I don't want, don't want it to be too strong. And we'll come in there, like so. And then spiced marmalade. It's a little here in that corner and we'll have an echo of that color coming in there. Now, to make this look even more naturalistic, I'm gonna use a spritzer. This just has clean water in it. And I'm gonna do a quick spray there. And I'm also going to spray some onto the backs of my fingers and flick it like that. Now to lift off the colour you just need some kitchen paper or a napkin or any kind of tissue and we'll wipe that away and we'll wipe away some of the ink from the craft mat as well. So that's there and I'm sure you'll agree that using that spritzer gives it an extra dimension. Before I go any further, we'll just dry that off. It won't take long. Now next, I'm going to use my embossing folder. As I say, this embossing folder does coordinate with the die cut and you can hopefully see when I place that under there. There, that's bang on. So I'm going to close this up and I'm holding it carefully between my thumb and forefinger. I don't want that to slip out of register. So let's take these paints, or inks rather, out of the way just for the time being. I'm going to bring my machine back in. So there we have it. There's the die. And this time, again, as before, I'm going to sandwich my folder between the two cutting plates. But this time I will need to use my platform. Now, as you'll notice when you take the top layer of the platform off, it gives you instructions on how to make your sandwich and how to lay it down on the platform so that we never ever make a mistake. And you know what? If you do it on the wrong layer, Two things will happen, either you'll realize that there's too much tension, too much pressure, or not enough. Whichever way it goes, you can amend that. There we are, so we'll take that through. Pass the machine just out of the way for a second. And there we have it. Now, at this stage, I can see we've got a lovely deep emboss. It's quite hard to pick up, so, what I'm going to do is take a couple more Distress Inks, namely Vintage Photo and Abandoned Coral. And I'm going to use these to kind of pick up that embossed detail. But again, less is more, so don't go too mad. I'm not pressing down too hard. The last thing I want to, this to do is go through so that lovely detail which we did before. This is just for picking out the detail 
on the top, just giving it a little more definition. Then that's the abandoned coral. Of course, I'm going to do the vintage photo now, which is which is a darker colour. So again, just taking our time. We don't have to put it all over, just in certain areas where you need more definition. There. Perfect. That's the vintage photo. Just what I wanted. But I would say that, wouldn't I? But it is. There we have it. And there is my gorgeous seashell now. We want to put it on a seaside background, so I'm coming in with some more of these distressed oxides. I'm starting off, this is going to be my sand. And I'm starting off, it's quite a primary yellow, but the way we're going to knock that colour back is by using a few distress oxides. We're going to use Vintage Photo again, and we're going to use Fossilised Amber. Now, I'll come in from the edge, and for this, I can just play around. It doesn't have to be completely flat. In fact, the more random it is, the more natural it starts to look. This is our beach. And again, we're going to spritz this. And we're going to do all sorts of things to try and make it look like a sandy beach. And find a vintage photo. Again, just in certain areas. Not all over. There. That looks a bit of a mess at this stage. So what I'm going to do is take my spritzer one more time, and again, spritz onto my fingers and flick. Lovely technique then. And I'm going to let that soak in just for a second. You can see it start to come through. And I'll take my tissue and I'll take some of that away. Now it's really starting. And what that, that spritzing technique does, it helps everything. It knocks everything back, helps it blend in, and gives it a more natural look. Now, I want to add some white to that as well. And I'm using Distress Spray Stain, Picket Fence. It's a lovely white. Now, people would usually spray this, but what I'm gonna do, it's a technique, can't remember where I saw it. It's not one of mine, but it's a very, very useful technique indeed. So I'm gonna take some of the pigment, and I'm just gonna lightly tap that. And you see the white appear. This is also great if you're doing a constellation and you want a starry night. It's a great technique to use. So that goes out of the way and we'll come back in with our heat tool. Just to dry that off. And, and when you, we dry this as well, the white, the colour slightly, it's not as stark, it's, it's not as bright. So it's not back. So it looks more natural. There we are. I think that will do it. Now, if you remember when I first did this, it was quite bright, but that's that's almost become like a sort of a cream colour there. And I'll just mop up any bits on the outside. Now, that's fossilised amber and vintage photo. So that's my beach. Now, obviously we want the sea coming into the shore. So I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to use three colours, three of my favourite colours. I love this colour blend. We're using Cracked Pistachio, followed by, oh actually, no, we're going to use, yes, yeah, Cracked Pistachio, Twisted Citron and what else but Salty Ocean. Now, we'll come in here and again, Slightly different to what I did. I'm using this circular motion. Um, and this is my base color, as it were. So I always start with the lighter color. And to freshen that up, we're coming in with Twisted Citron. This is the lovely, punchy, bright green. Really freshens everything up, everything it comes into contact with. Now, finally, I'm going to come in with Salty Ocean. Isn't that a lovely 
that lovely colour of blue. And it seems to sit perfectly with these two as well. Now, this time I'm coming in there. And again, you can see it's quite rough, but I'm blending it in, smoothing it into place. And now, this, this really helps everything look, look seasidey. Yep, there were such a word. I'll just put these away so that I don't get any water on them. Keep them out of harm's way. And again, this time, I'm going to spray onto the back of my fingers, like so, with some clean water. And there. Just flick it in place, like that. And we'll let some of these bigger drops as well come down there. Perfect, I hope, I hope. It's a random technique, so we really don't know at this stage how effective it's gonna be. But I got a pretty good idea. You can see the water is soaking in there. Now you can dry this off with, it, with your tool, with your heat tool, or you can dab that away using some tissue again. And this looks like it's slightly blue underneath, but I think you'll see when I, when I bring the heat tool in, and it's very important at this stage that I use this heat tool. I want the card to be completely dry for the next thing that I'm gonna do. It's quite good to dry both the back and the front of the card with your heat tool because it evens out any warping. Inevitably, when you use water on card, um, unless it's the heaviest of uh, watercolour papers, it's going to warp slightly. But we want to avoid that as much as possible. And there we have it. That's all dry now. And next, to get the... Of course, when, when the sea comes into the shore, you get that lovely foam around the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear and like so. There we have it, and you can see we've got that lovely white border now. So, let's take this, place one on top of the other, and there, that's completed the look. So, before I carry on, I'm gonna bring in my machine again, because I've used my computer to print off the phrase summer lemon, and I'm gonna crop that using one of these lovely dies. It comes from a set of six and they're sort of vintage tickets um, made by and designed as is the uh, shell die by none other than Mr. Tim Holtz. And that, so that I keep that perfectly in register. So what I would do with this is I would measure the die that I want to use and then I would create a text box to fit the text within. Um, it's fairly easy if you know your way around a PC. Uh, so there we are, we're bringing the machine again. Now this time, of course, we need to go to the top level of our platform. So we put that shim in there, bottom plate down, die and card in place, and simply wind it through. And that's it. There's our little ticket. And what I'm doing, you see, I'm using my fingers and thumb to give that a slight curl. Because it's time to put my card together. And here it is. I wanna, I'm think I'm gonna do this. Hmm. I'm gonna offset this slightly. Doing it completely straight. At this stage, you could use some PVA. It doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. something like that. There. Now, how am I going to put these two together? I'm going to use my stapler. And you know what? I just put my big shot on top of my stapler. <sighs> Honestly, can't get the staff. Right. Now. I'm going to come in with one staple here. 
one there and one at the base. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to attach my lovely seashell. Mm, thinking kind of there and to attach that I'll use a couple of 3D foam pads from the good people at Sticks 2. Yay! Take the backing off there. Put it in place thus. And I'm going to attach my summer loving ticket. And again, we'll bring in the stapler like so. Now one last thing. This is um, natural raffia. So I'm going to twist this and knot it in the center and kind of we'll bring that down there a little you can you can tear you can tear this off using your fingertips you can use a craft knife you can you can break it between your teeth you can do whatever you wish um, sometimes tearing it really helps so there we have it really helps keep it natural looking you know when you crop it with a pair of scissors and it all looks the same length mm, didn't quite work I'll take my Sizzix glue gun and we'll pop that in place like so. And there we have it. All done. It's it's a lovely uh, lovely set of techniques, this the way that the the way that the colours apply, but obviously having the die and the embossing folder together in one set really makes a big difference. There you go, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, brought a bit of summer sunshine into your lives. If you enjoyed the make, you want some more inspiration perhaps, or you just want to find out more about our products, then go to sizzix.co.uk. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!